decision that can define the shoot. A personal, creative, and technical choice made every day by photographers and cinematographers alike. The selection of a lens described with words that signify emotion as much as science. Tone, color, sharpness, depth. Our goal is to remove the boundaries between what is imagined and what is possible. And for over 70 years of canon history, it's why we've always placed glass first. So here we are in the getting ready room, which is um, what we're going to cover right now, is how we shoot the bride getting ready and the groom getting ready. Um, first thing when I walk into a room is identify the light sources. Um, we've got obviously got light coming in through the windows, we've got chandeliers, and we've got these spotlights. And more often than not, if I've got good natural light in a room like this, I'm going to turn off all the lights if I can. Um, most of the time in this situation, the big benefit is the color balance in here is going to be really hard to, to master because window light is going to be a different temperature than light coming out of these tungsten bulbs, which is sort of your household yellow. It's very yellow orange. So I've got blue light from the window, orange light from these inside, and I just want to make it all one color so I can white balance my camera and not have to worry about it. So the first thing I'll do is find the light switches. I do that all the time. And sometimes the mother of the bride will freak out a little bit like, oh, it got dark in here. And I go, well, do you want uh, a little more light or do you want nice pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but you know, sometimes you can use these. If it was dark outside, I would be definitely using them and I'd color balance for tungsten. Um, so would you turn off the chandelier also or just the spots? Probably just the spots. The chandelier I can manage because compared to how bright it is outside, the chandelier is putting off very little light and it's not going to affect our color temperature nearly as much as these orange spotlights are. So, so what we've got is, um, you've got a typical situation. I'm going to shoot this first like it's a room that isn't beautiful. Um, and so window light is really safe, it's really easy and a lot of people do it. But one of the big mistakes I see people make is you've got a dress which is typically white which is almost always brighter than your subject's face. So one of the things you need to do is realize that window light comes down. And so if you try to expose this, the bride's dress is always going to be brighter than her face unless you do something about it, which is where I start to employ a reflector. Julie, would you grab a reflector for me, honey? OK, cool. So you can play with the light a little bit. And as you see, sort of, if you use even the curtain to flag the light on the dress a little bit, the light, her face now becomes brighter or rather the dress darker, the face appears to be brighter. So what we'll typically do is get a two for one, is I'll get a little fill, and I'll also be able to block the light that's on the dress with one of these handy dandy five in one reflectors. Cool? Okay, actually, Jules? <laughs> she uh, does just about everything. Okay, Kim, when, um, I sh when I set up a shot, I identify the light, I kind of sit the subject in it without posing them, and then I fine tune the light slash scene and I do everything until the shot's perfect. And once everything's ready, then I start working with the client. Because the, the thing that makes images is the expression. It's not going to be, the bride isn't going to say, that's a beautifully lit portrait that you made of me there. You know, <laughs> they want to know, they, they're more concerned about how they look. Do I look happy? You know, do I look pretty? And all that stuff. Am I wrong? <laughs> OK. All right. So um, I want you to turn your knees away from the window a little bit. And the reason that I'm doing this is because, um, I like to shoot to create depth, even in a close shot. I always put the body at an angle and put the dress out of the light so that I can balance that a little bit better. And my lens today is an 85. And again, this is another cheat because the 85 I actually own is the Canon uh, 1.8, which is way less expensive. And I love it. This is about 1500 bucks or something. And the one I use is only like three. And I like it better than this one. But this is all the rental place had because my autofocus broke on my other one because I I'm really hard on my equipment. Now, so now I'm going to fill in a little bit because I don't want the shadows to be too harsh, but I'm going to go a little bit more this way. Nice posture. And I want you to bring your hands back out a little bit. Good. So what I've done is I'm separating her arm from the body because dresses like this 
which are, is that halter? Is that what they're called? A halter? I don't know. What strapless. strapless. We'll say strapless. If you're just sitting, strapless dresses can, be, can cause unflattering things to happen to everybody that wears them. And so when I wear a strapless dress, I always make sure that I have good posture. So if you separate those arms a little bit, because her hands aren't in the picture, and what I've done is slide your right hand back a little bit more. Beautiful. You see, I've shown that now I've got the curve of her waist, and her arm is separated. And bring your shoulder back a little bit more. Perfect. And now everything is tight and beautiful. Nose this way. Leaning into me a little bit. Good. All right. So we've got beautiful light. Perfect. And now, what I want you to do is pretend that I'm wearing roller skates. There you go. <laughs> See, it's like expression isn't always about asking somebody to give you an expression. Sometimes you just say the thing that's going to get it. And that takes talent sometimes. You can be a terrible photographer who can get great expression if you can just talk to people, you know? Um, and uh, you have to read people. Part of photography is meeting someone who you've never met before and then getting an expression out of them. So what I'm doing now is getting some details. Bam, bam, bam. And now I'm creating like a spread in the album because the background doesn't matter. Everything's close. And I'm shallow depth of field. And I'm happy with the way that looks. And now I'm going to get her to sit up a little straighter for me, Kim. Good. And then lean with a straight back. Good. OK. Good. And eyes out the window. One small smile. And then bring your eyes to me, darling. If you, oh, beautiful. Good. OK, cool. Awesome. Headshot accomplished.